Hi there, this is Bronk Flint here. Uh, just wanted to spend a few moments and kind of do a brief introduction to um, a class that I did uh, last August. It was the Economics 101 class and as I said we did that last August but um, we were kind of hesitant in, in putting it up for a, a number of different reasons. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to introduce in this, this brief introduction to uh, Economics 101. After I pondered it for a little bit, I uh, decided that these classes, uh, which were one hour each, and there was four of them, um, that they were anointed, and so they should be put up for you, the uh, viewer, to see. Um, but one of our hesitancy, uh, or a few of our hesitancy, was that uh, number one, it was a very, uh, it was just as advertised. Uh, it was economics 101. So there's not a lot of. It's just kind of that. It's uh, not in depth accounting and all the the, the bells and whistles. It's just uh, kind of. See the ball, see Jane, see Tag. It's just real, in that sense of the word, it's simplistic, but there's some real biblical uh, wisdom and practical wisdom that goes along with it, in which I felt like that was uh, important to, to get out there. Um, the other thing, too, was I, I, I kind of hesitated in putting it up, um, was because it was uh, in a very relaxed environment. This is Florida. And uh, it was the month of August, and so it was a Sunday night that I did it, and so um, a small group, and so we were just in t-shirt and uh, cargo shorts, and so it's a very relaxed environment. So um, if you watch it and uh, you say, wow, they, they really get relaxed around there at the prayer center, well, on that particular occasion I was, or those particular occasions I, I, I was. So that's that's part of it. The other thing too is that I just didn't want to be misunderstood um, in some of the things that we presented and uh, I'll reflect on that in, in just a moment. Um, I want to address, I uh, want you to understand that what, we're, what we've put this uh, lesson together for was to address a problem that I feel is just a foundational problem and I would say probably maybe most especially among uh, the Millennials uh, the younger adults because I feel like that in many aspects there's no real mentorship in many of their lives coming up we've got some of the, the brightest minds that ever was today and education is, is in, in, increased and, and I'm for education and certainly for bright minds, but we've got a lot of millennials that are just really uh, tech savvy and really smart in a lot of different ways, but yet no one has taught them the basic fundamentals of financial uh, prosperity. And um, they come out of colleges and universities and they are very smart in what they have been trained to do and just very um, uneducated in a lot of just the basic fundamentals of, of financial prosperity. The other thing too was um, that I felt was a real problem among uh, the body of Christ was that um, uh, so much of when people are going through some kind of um, financial difficulty, um, they often blame too much of it on, too much of it on the uh, spiritual aspects of it. And I believe that there are, is a spiritual aspect oftentimes to uh, a financial attack against the body of Christ as a whole and individuals as well. But um, I think and I really believe um, that much of the financial difficulties that many Christians walk through is they themselves, uh, their own makings and, and not understanding how to handle uh, their finances with discretion. And so uh, people, that being themselves, are many times and could be most of the time uh, the real problem um, to financial difficulties. And of course, as I said, there can also be a spiritual ex aspect of it as well. Um, Proverbs 1 verse 5, and I'm going to read that for you, was kind of one of the launching pads of, of the, the four lessons that we did. 
and uh, they're only an hour long, as I said. And, and verse 5 says this, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And what this tells us is that, in simplicity, is that um, the wise will increase in learning. In other words, people that are wise, uh, they will attain to wisdom. They look for wisdom. They look for ways of of education to increase their wisdom. Um, but the Bible goes on just a couple of verses later, I believe it's down in, in verse 7, it says that the fool despises wisdom and the fool despises knowledge. It actually says, um, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I think that's very indicative of what you see a lot of times uh, among people that are going through financial difficulties. Uh, one of the things that really almost broke my heart or it really was sad to me is um, when we offered these courses or this class it wasn't a course but it was four lessons um, we did it on a Sunday night and it was one hour long and it's just that um, and yet we offered it to, to, to everyone in the church and I, I noticed um, that many of the people that uh, have the hardest time and the most difficult time with finances uh, were absent from those classes and these are the same people that I knew that next week and next month and next year and because I'm a pastor and uh, obviously I wouldn't divulge those that information to other people but I knew that uh, being a pastor and loving the people I knew that these people uh, certain ones were just struggling and have struggled for years and yet they were absent from uh, the classes and this is, this is the Word of God proves itself out. It says a wise man will say, give me more. Give me more. I want more wisdom. If there's anything, even a nugget, I'll take that nugget to increase in wisdom and understanding. And so um, that was uh, one of the major uh, premises or foundation for us doing the classes is just to get as much over to people as we possibly could. could. Um, Jesus said in Luke chapter 16, verse 18, or verse 8, and I'll read that. Um, it says, And the Lord commanded, uh, commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, Jesus uh, was talking about stewardship here, and that's a lesson way too big for this introduction here. But the, the amazing part was he was actually, by way of example, saying this, that the children of this world, in some cases concerning finances, really have more wisdom than the children of light. And what a tremendous indictment, but it came from our Lord, so you know, it, you know it's absolutely true that um, there are aspects of financial prosperity that the world uses that the children of light, um, just because you're born again and just because you're even spirit-filled does not guarantee your financial prosperity. Um, uh, it makes access for it, but it doesn't guarantee it. It just uh, gives you a way to begin to claim the promises and access the, the wisdom of God. So um, that's vitally important, I think, that we need to understand as Christians that um, anything that we can receive or glean from wisdom um, that it's readily available through the Word of God. And so we go into a number of those, those, those things. Um, the other thing that I mentioned, one of the three things that kind of kept us in a hesitant kind of uh, mode as far as putting these out was that um, I, I recommend a particular uh, book to be read. And what I'd like to say in this introduction as a cover-all to say is I'm not validating the author. I don't know uh, the lifestyle. I, I've never heard anything, any particular thing bad about the author. I'm not going to mention the book now because this is an introduction. I'd like for you to get into the course if you're and um, before you hear the name of the book. Um, but basically, it's a book that just kind of opens up uh, the mind to understand it gets it out of a um, out of the blocks out of a cookie cutter mentality it makes you think outside of the bo uh, blocks and so um, it, this is not a validate it's not a spiritual book it's just a book on finances and kind of uh, helps you understand uh, the ways of thinking maybe out of rut kind of of ways of thinking 
Um, the other thing too, uh, and I've got some notes here, I want to make sure that I don't, don't miss anything in this introduction. Uh, I don't have the luxury of a teleprompter, but, uh, but uh, we're enjoy being able to get this over to you. Um, I don't want to validate, uh, as I said, um, everything in the book as to say, um, this is what you need to do. Uh, I just want, it's a suggestion book and also there is a uh, audio um, to the book if you're busy and you can't uh, and you can't uh, you know read this book it's not a, a big book but you can listen to it maybe uh, take you know a few hours of your life just to open up your your mind and your thoughts to uh, different ways to thinking about how to increase your finances uh, the other thing too is um, I believe at one particular point, maybe towards the end, um, I made mention of a particular Christian investment company. And uh, again, I'm not telling you as the viewer to get involved with them. You, you can, I think I mentioned them, but you, uh, you can or cannot, uh, or it's up to you whether you have uh, any, uh, any kind of introduction to them or, or get involved with them at all in your life. Uh, and again, I may have mentioned, um, because it's been a number of months, and I'll probably be listening to these again because they're good, but um, I may have mentioned some uh, personal involvement with this particular um, Christian-based financial fund, but please do not take that as a, uh, as, a, as a suggestion that you need to do the same. Everybody needs to, to pray, especially when it comes to risk and pray and make your own decisions. Um, so basically that's it and uh, I, I think it's going to be good for you to listen to and uh, again it's just a, a 101 but uh, I pray that it blesses you and I pray that it adds wisdom to you. God bless you.